Hello YouTube, thank you for clicking on this video and shout out to Big Daddy Algorithm for pimping it out to you. My name is Megan and welcome to my channel. So I'm doing something a little different today. This is my first vlog style video. I am getting tattooed today, so I thought I would just bring you guys along for the ride and show you kind of like how I get ready to get tattooed and also like where I'm going. Um, I'm getting like my upper arm done. It's the start of my sleeve. I already have my astrology tattoos on that arm, which I got about like six years ago now, I think. So I'm going to do this part of my arm. Um, it's a pretty big tattoo. It's going to go from like my upper arm to my elbow and I'm going to just slowly get that sleeve done. So this is kind of my first big tattoo. It's my first color work. I also have like this tattoo here, which I got, uh, I guess like three years ago now when I turned 30. So I'm really excited. Um, so it's going to be a tattoo of the goddess Lilith, who is really important to me and I will explain why later. But the tattoo shop that I'm going to is an all women run tattoo shop, which I thought was really fitting for a Lilith tattoo. So I'm gonna go get some breakfast. Time's a ticking. I do have to work this morning. I only took a half day to get this done, so um, I do have to like do some work before I go. But I'm gonna go now and make sure that I have a good breakfast, make sure that I'm hydrated, feed my dog. So come along with me, and we should have a fun day together. Let's go. Okay, so just going downstairs to get my breakfast, and there is beautiful sunshine this morning. Bonsai, come on. You want to go outside? There we go. Do you want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Go outside. No? How come? What's the matter? What's the matter? I want to go outside. Come on. Try again? Come on. Let's go outside. Come on. There you go. There you go. Sometimes he needs a little coaxing. He is not an outdoor dog. He is an indoor pup, just like his mom. All right, there you go. Okay, so I am going to have my overnight oats. So I've got strawberry, banana, chocolate, overnight oats. So it's important to have a healthy breakfast. So I'm gonna have that. I'm also gonna have some lunch before I go because my appointment's not till 12. So that should sustain me through that entire session. All right, we're gonna try again. Do you wanna go outside? There we go. And he's off. Okay, I am drinking green tea this morning because caffeine before a tattoo appointment is not the best idea. And I'm like iffy with coffee as it is. So it's a green tea day. All right, breakfast is done. Bonsai is eating. And it is like 10 to 9, which means I have to work in 10 minutes. So I'm going to go do that. And then in a couple hours, I can get ready and go. All right, so it's like 10.30 right now, and I made myself a lunch, just a quick salad with cucumber, tomato, red onions, sesame seeds, and leftover chicken from last night. So I've got my proteins, I've got my healthy fats, there's some olive oil in there, I have another green tea, I have my water, so I'm gonna just chomp this down and then start to get ready. It's a little early for me to actually eat lunch, like I'm not even hungry because I ate like two hours ago, but... I do need to get some food in my system before I go to this appointment, so I'm gonna eat this and then wrap up my work day and then start to get ready. All right, lunch is done, so I'm gonna pack my bag. We're gonna start with wallet, phone charger, EpiPen because I have exercise anaphylaxis, so I have to carry an EpiPen wherever I go in case I have an attack while I'm out and about which has happened before, it's not fun. Uh, snacks, I've got cookies and an apple, and of course crystals, rose quartz to help with like skin healing, carnelian for strength, and amazonite just for like strength of mind. So that's my bag packed. Obviously I'll throw my phone and my earbuds in here, but now I'm gonna go get ready and get dressed. All right, so while I'm doing my makeup, I thought I would tell you guys a little bit about my tattoo and why I'm getting it and why Lilith is like important to me. I apologize if the audio is crappy. I 
have not gotten a new microphone yet. Mine is currently broken, so sorry about that. Um, I will do what I can in editing, but this is just how it's gonna be. Um, so I am getting a tattoo of Lilith, like I said before, and Lilith is a really important person, well, mythological figure to me. Um, for those of you who don't know her story, she was considered the first woman in the Jewish Talmud. And also she appears in a lot of like Babylonian mythology. And basically she was the first wife of Adam and God created her and Adam both from the earth. So they were created to be equal, but Adam wanted Lilith to submit to her and she refused. So she left the Garden of Eden and went to go live in the desert. Um, but while she left, she was cursed by God to live like out in the desert and copulate with demons essentially. Um, so she became sort of like a satanic figure even though all she really wanted was equality. So Lilith has been a popular figure in the zeitgeist lately um, because she kind of has come to stand for like modern feminism. Um, for me personally, she's important because she represents like having to leave the garden. So like having to leave situations where um, maybe outwardly they look like paradise, they look awesome, but for whatever reason they just don't um, align with who you are as a person. And I have had to leave many of those situations in my life, oftentimes when I didn't want to, um, especially with relationships. So for me, she represents having to let go of a relationship even when you really, really don't want to or even when doing so is hard or will cause you to be like stigmatized in some way. So. That's why she's important to me. Um, she's also really, really prominent in my birth chart. For those of you who don't know, my other big passion besides like fashion and history is astrology. And I used to be like a practicing astrologer. I don't practice anymore, as in like I don't read charts for clients anymore, but I am a member of Astrology Toronto. And sometimes I do lectures and I do like workshops on like interpreting natal aspects. My specialties in astrology are uh, relationship astrology, so like synastry and composite charts. And I also specialize in mundane astrology, which is not boring astrology, as the name would imply. Mundane just means like astrology of the world. So essentially the astrology of world events, um, which kind of aligns with like my interest in politics as well. So that's like mainly what I do. Um, but of course, like when you do anything astrology related, the first step is to interpret natal charts. So that's where I started, just like everybody else who learned astrology ever. Um, so Lilith is an energy that we all have in our natal charts. So there are three main iterations of Lilith. There is like the Black Moon Lilith, the Oscillating Lilith, and there is the Asteroid Lilith. So I am talking about the Black Moon Lilith in particular. That's usually the energy that I look at in a natal chart. Um, we all have Lilith somewhere in our charts. It's in a sign and in a degree of that sign. For me, I have Lilith in my 11th house and it is exactly conjunct my midheaven. So that means that it is a really, really prominent energy in my chart. So like my midheaven is at 21 degrees of Libra, which is exactly where my Lilith is. So Lilith energy in a chart, like wherever she is in her natal chart, just symbolizes like an energy of disruption and rebellion. So wherever she is in like the sign in the house, she will turn that sign and that house upside down. So because I have her in my mid heaven, which is like a very, very public part of your chart, um, Lilith is like a prominent energy for me. It's something that people notice when they look at me. So wherever she is in your chart, she may not be really noticeable. Um, if you have her like in a succeeding or a cadent house and not like conjunct any of your planets or not really making any aspects to any of your natal planets, then Lilith won't be a really prominent energy for you. Um, it won't really matter that much, but if you have her conjunct like your descendant, your ascendant, uh, your IC or your midheaven like I do, or conjunct your sun or moon or in like a really prominent place in your chart, then Lilith energy is going to be really felt in your life. For me, it has always been felt in like my relationships essentially because Libra is the sign of relationships. Also in my career to some extent because um, it is conjunct my midheaven and the midheaven is like the point of your chart that is like the most visible to everybody else. It's like your public persona essentially and it's what people see when they look at you. It's your reputation. So because I have Lilith there, um, she has been a really disruptive energy in my life. 
And when I was younger, I used to fight against that a lot, like especially in my 20s. Um, I sort of carried with me this like, um, kind of this like resignation of like, yeah, I'm just gonna be like rejected by everyone I like and that's just how it is. And I kind of carry that with me in my 20s. And like, obviously that's a really toxic mindset to have. It's not like a really good way to view yourself or others. So I had to really unlearn that and I had to do a lot of work to unlearn that. So in doing that, I learned to kind of embrace that Lilith energy and being like, yeah, well, you know what? If people reject me, then they're not for me. And the people who are for me aren't gonna reject me. And also if someone rejects you, it's not because of you it's because of them, right? Like someone rejecting you usually has nothing to do with you. Um, it's all about their needs, their preferences and where they're at in life. So in learning that, I kind of also learned to integrate that Lilith energy that had caused me a lot of difficulty in my like teen years and in my twenties. Um, but it was hard work to unlearn that. Like I had to go through some really scary things. I had to leave a lot of gardens of my own that I would have preferred to stay in. Um, but using that energy and integrating it really kind of gives it meaning. So that's like the lighter side of Lilith. She has a really shamanic side to her. And so if you can embrace that and like learn to integrate that energy, then you can really make your Lilith work for you. And like I said, for most people, they're not going to really feel that energy too, too much unless you have Lilith really prominent. If you do have Lilith really prominent, you're probably gonna struggle with like feeling rejected, feeling left out, feeling isolated from society in whatever way. Um, so the best thing to do is just to like learn to integrate those energies in whatever ways you can. So essentially that has been like my journey with Lilith. And so that's why I'm getting her tattooed on my arm. I have like, lots of astrology tattoos already and eventually this whole arm is going to be a sleeve and it's all going to be astrology related tattoos so i thought because lilith is such a prominent energy in my chart and in my life that would be a good place to start so that's why i'm getting her tattooed on my body um i am also like very much a feminist and i have been working really hard in recent years to like unlearn toxic masculinity and to just kind of separate myself from the male gaze. Um, a lot of women have internalized that male gaze and I feel like as we get older, it's a really damaging thing to have internalized because obviously society places no value on women as they age. So I'm trying to get ahead of that right now. So in order to like avoid a crisis in like my mid forties or early fifties, I am trying to actively learn or unlearn the male gaze, which is a lot of the reason why I cut my hair short as well. Um, I had really long hair for like most of my twenties and that was a really big part of my identity. Like I was the girl with super long hair and I was really proud of my hair and I spent a lot of time like caring for it, growing it out. It was like a big part of my identity. Um, but I recently chopped it off like a few months ago because I didn't want to like use that as part of my identity anymore and also because like i really hated having long hair it was annoying i hated like i hated that i got stuck underneath my shoulders of my bags every time i went out i hated that i like shed hair everywhere i went i hated having to like clean it out of my sink and out of my bathtub all the time i hated like having it all like falling on my neck. Like I hate the sensation of things touching my neck. I'm like really sensitive to that. So I hated like having my hair on my neck all the time and I always would have it up in like a bun or a clip. So I just kind of had this honest moment with myself of like, you know what, I really hate having long hair. Like sure it looks good and sure like it's what men like, but I don't like it. And like, who am I having this long hair for anyway? Like it's my body, I have to deal with it. So. I chopped it off and I love my short hair. It's really easy to care for and like I never have to put it up and I just kind of leave it and go and I just wish that I'd done this years ago. So I am just really trying hard to like unlearn that male gaze and to just kind of peel it out of myself and do that work. So Lilith has been like a really supportive energy as I've been doing that work. And so I think for women, if we can embrace that Lilith aspect, I think we can really kind of Sorry, I just have to concentrate on this part. It's really hard to like do my makeup in front of this little tiny camera. I'm trying my best, guys. Um, yeah, but I think like if we can just kind of uh, embrace that Lilith energy, um, it's a really powerful thing. And like, yes, she can be disruptive, and yes, she can be, um, she can be 
kind of a force for a challenge in our life but if we can learn to just embrace that then she can also be a very liberating very freeing energy as well so that's for women um for men in their charts i found that lilith tends to represent um the kind of women that they find like intimidating and this goes for like men who aren't straight as well because obviously they still have to deal with women in some regard but in like a man in a man's chart lilith tends to represent um women who they find like frightening intimidating uh, maybe too much women who they tend to reject um that's real fine lilith so like for example if you have lilith in cancer you might be intimidated by women who are mothers or women who are like nurturing in some way that sort of like nurturing um feminine energy might be scary for you or uncomfortable or intimidating for you um if you have lilith in virgo then you might be intimidated by women who are very detail oriented very neat and clean have like really set routines who are very like disciplined in some way um who are like neat freaks or perfectionists like you might be intimidated by that energy so it really helps to kind of like look at where lilith is in your chart and have like a you know have an astrologer look at that and see what kind of energy she's bringing into your life um and then for women, she tends to represent like where we want liberation, like where we want to be free, um, where maybe we're seen as being like not correct in some way, where like the places where society and people in our lives like reject us. So like if you're a woman and you have Lilith in Cancer, you might reject the idea of motherhood. You might really not want to be a mom. You might sort of, or you might be a mom and be like afraid that people see you as a bad mom um that might be like a concern for you you have like lilith and leo you might reject like the part of you that wants to be like seen that wants to be glamorous that wants to be like out in the public so it's a really interesting placement um women who have like lilith on the ascendant um, tend to draw in like a lot of stalkers for some reason like I actually had a friend in high school who has Lilith like exactly conjunct her ascendant and she would get like literally stalked by guys like all the time like we used to joke about it which like is not really a thing to joke about but you know when you're 17 you just don't give a fuck so um we used to like tease her and joke about it because she literally would be like stalked by men um, and she had Lilith on the Ascendant. So it's a really interesting energy. Um, if you guys like want to know more about Lilith, like, or if you're interested in astrology, like I can do more astrology videos if you want. Um, like I said, like I do lectures and workshops sometimes. And so if you're interested in like the astrology of relationships or in the astrology of like world events and what's happening, I would be more than happy to talk about that. Um, I do a lot of research on that in my spare time. It is like my other passion. Um, but I don't, I just like tend to not talk about it on this channel too much because I'm trying to like make this channel about history and historical fashion. Um, and I don't want to like confuse the algorithm. So that's why I tend to not like talk about it that much. Um, okay. What's left to do? Yeah. So basically I also really love, uh, mythology and I love stories about like, gods and goddesses from different cultures and different parts of the world. I studied anthropology in university and um, I really love just like the myths and stories from different cultures. And I think like mythology is a really helpful tool for like understanding ourselves and for um, like integrating metaphors and for using our life circumstances to um, per, like to give us meaning. For example, like if you go through a hard time, sometimes reading a story, um, that resonates with you on like an archetypal level can really help to provide context and meaning to whatever it is that you're going through. So like for me, the Lilith story also has a lot to do with addiction and like overcoming addiction because sometimes um, like it's the metaphor of leaving the garden, right? So like you might love the thing that you're addicted to, but it's not good for you. So you still have to leave, right? And you might always love and long for that thing, but you just don't go back to it. You stay, like you maintain your freedom and your independence from it. 
However, that doesn't mean that you stop loving it or that you stop wanting it. It just means that you recognize that it's not good for you and that you shouldn't be it like interacting with it or that you shouldn't have that as part of your life. So that's a hard thing to realize and it's not an easy thing to do, but um, it's really important to do that work. So for me, that's also what the Lilith story is about. And there's literally nothing I can do about the bags under my eyes. Like I've tried to cover them up, but like, that's just the way it is. Um, I'm just gonna do my lipstick. And there we go. I'm doing like lighter makeup today just because it's really warm out. And like, I thought about just not doing makeup at all, but I am going out for dinner after. So I don't want to like look like a complete, like tired, unenergetic, garden gnome so I was like hey I'll just do like sort of minimal makeup and that'll be it uh, yeah. and my dog is barking I have my door shut he wants to be let in hold on one sec there we go I have like a velcro dog and if he's not in the same room as me he gets like really upset so okay have to put that in my bag so that's it for makeup. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my hair. And usually what I do for my hair is like, I just have this misting bottle and I'm just gonna give it a bit of a mist. Another reason I love my short hair, it's just so easy to get it done. Like I just mist it with some water and then I have a salt spray and I'm just gonna give it a bit of texture. and then like mess it up as much as I can. And that's pretty much it. All right. Okay, so jewelry for today. I have my garnet bar necklace, which has turned into a loop. There we go. So garnet's definitely important for today. And then I have my, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like, I can get the camera to focus. There we go. It's like a little tiny um, necklace with two yellow diamond charms that I bought last year. I love yellow diamonds. They're like my favorite thing ever, but they're obviously expensive. So all I could afford was these tiny, tiny little ones, but I love them. Um, so I have them on a little chain. So I've got my strength tarot card necklace because today is a good day for that. There we go. I have this like Moroccan oil fragrance and it's just really light, light and nice. And then I've got my Amber by Rag and Bone. So we're gonna do that. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna do my bracelet stack. So I've got my chain bracelet and then I've got my little <clears throat> nail bracelet. It's like a knockoff of the Cartier one. And then we're gonna do my ring stack and then we're gonna get dressed. Okay, so for rings, I have my little fidget spinner ring and that goes on this finger. And I love it, I wear it all the time. It's like really good for anxiety. And then I have my turquoise ring. I also wear this all the time. Then we have my little diamond and gold ring. This used to be my great aunt's engagement ring. She lived in Paris like after the war and she got engaged to someone and then broke it off and like this was her ring. So she sadly passed away like six years ago but I still wear her ring all the time. My little tiny channel set white gold diamond ring and I wear that in a stack on top of that. My little gold and diamond ring that my uncle brought back from Germany for me when I was like a little girl and it still fits me. So that goes there. And then my two pinky rings, Dream and Hope. I bought them like six years ago when I was going through a really rough time. So I wear them on my pinky stacked like that. And then just a simple gold band. And on top of that, I like to stack my silver necklace with like the little blue diamonds. My camera is not focusing, but yeah, that goes on top like that. And then we're done with the ring stack on this hand. So then on the other hand, I'm gonna do my little sterling silver olive leaf ring and that goes there. And on top of that, I do my little gold ring. I have like a little tiny orange spessor type garnet. So that goes there. Today's a good day for garnets. Um, and then 
my sterling silver bit chain. And then I have like a gold tiny chain ring and that goes there on top. And then, oh, I forgot this guy. So that's gonna go actually on this hand. Underneath my blue diamond. There we go. I thought that was looking a little bare. And then on this middle finger, I have this like raw opal. I love opals. It's like my favorite stone. So there we go. That's my ring stack and I'm gonna go get dressed. All right, so I'm wearing my Motley Crue t-shirt today because it is just a comfy t-shirt day. My studded leather pencil skirt. I got this at Black Market Vintage for like 10 bucks and I took it in because it was too big and then I added the studs. This is not the most comfortable skirt to wear and when you get tattooed, you do want to be as comfortable as possible. However, like I said, I'm going out for dinner later so I don't want to wear like denim cut off shorts and look like a total slob. So I'll just suck it up and we're gonna just wear the skirt. Cropped denim jacket. I bought this at a secondhand store like years ago and then I cropped it to make it look a little shorter. And then I also like added my sigil in paint and I added this little patch detail that says, do what you love and let it kill you because that's my motto. And then I added my little moon at the back. So we're gonna put this on. It's really warm today, however, it may be cool in the studio while I'm getting tattooed. And also, as I said, I'm going out for dinner later and it will definitely be cooler when I leave. And also I'm gonna want something to like cover up that tattoo so that the sun doesn't get at it. So I think I'm happy with this. Next thing we need shoes. I'm doing my comfy Zara rubber slides. These are super comfortable. I can walk in them. So we're gonna be wearing those today. I'll be walking around downtown. So definitely want your feet to be comfy if nothing else. Last thing, adding a few more things to my bag. I have my setting spray by Urban Decay and I have a little hand cream, very important. I have my NARS lipstick and my lip liner. And then I have my sunglasses. All right, done. We're ready to go. One hour later. All right, so it's the next day and I've just taken my bandage off. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like before it starts to really heal and then the ink gets like covered over by skin. So here it is. Let's see if I can prop this up, hold on. There she is. I love it. She did such a good job. Heather, my tattoo artist, was amazing. The place that I went to was a women-run tattoo shop and they were fantastic. They had blankets and snacks and pillows and water and like everything that you could possibly imagine to make you feel comfortable and it was just fantastic. So I am definitely going to go back there. Eventually this arm is going to be a sleeve. So when I go to like finish the arm, I will go back there for sure. But I am so happy like the shading on her body, <clears throat> the watercolor effect. I just love it. Like what an awesome way to honor that Lilith energy. So I'm super happy. I can't wait for this to heal so that it reveals its final form. But there she is. I also want to get... Hecate on my forearm and Sekhmet and Persephone somewhere. So eventually this whole arm will be just goddesses that I love. So fantastic experience. I had so much fun yesterday. It didn't hurt at all. Like this part of your body usually doesn't hurt getting tattooed. And like I have a pretty high threshold for pain anyway. So I literally just felt like someone was like rubbing their thumb over my skin the entire time. So it didn't hurt. It wasn't bad. So if you don't have any tattoos, but you're thinking of getting one, this is a good spot to try. I, when I got this one done, it was like excruciating because I have a really bony sternum. So this like going right over my bones hurts so much. It only took 20 minutes, but like I had to physically force myself to stay in the chair because it was so painful. But this was like four hours and I didn't feel anything. So go figure. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in. A um, little bit of a different style of video than what I usually do. I will come back with some like history rants and some tutorials coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, hope you all have an awesome day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. My channel is like kind of stalled because I am bad at posting videos lately because I've been like concentrating on other things, but I will still be posting videos. So definitely hit that notification bell so that you know when a video has been posted. And I'm also on Instagram and TikTok as well. And that's where I post like more regular updates about projects. So if you're interested in that, definitely don't forget to follow me on Instagram or TikTok whatever your preferred platform is. So I hope you all have an awesome day and I will see you in the next one. <sighs> Toodaloo.